Nature has surprising ways of defending itself. Many species have developed totally unique ways to stay safe, some of which might surprise you. In this video, we're looking at 10 amazing ways that plants and animals protect themselves. Welcome back to All About Nature. On my channel, I try to bring nature-related content that's both educational and entertaining. If you like this kind of content, then please consider liking the video, leaving a comment, or even subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate your support. Horned lizards are a genus of 21 species from Canada, the United States, and Mexico. These lizards have a line of defenses they use to avoid being preyed upon. Their first defense is, of course, camouflage. They blend in extremely well with the rocky ground that they inhabit. If they're seen, they have a unique way of running to escape. Instead of traveling at a consistent pace, they go and stop to confuse their predators. If they're caught, a series of sharp scales across their bodies makes it more difficult for predators to swallow them. But when all else fails, they have a last ditch defense. At least eight of the species are known to be able to change the way blood flows by limiting how fast the blood leaves their heads, but allowing a regular amount of blood in, pressure builds. Specialized blood vessels in their eyelids burst, sending out a stream of foul-tasting blood, which is particularly effective against mammalian carnivores. Along the waterways of tropical Central and South America, is a species of waterbird that most people would overlook. They have cryptic coloration and generally don't stand more than 50 centimeters tall. Their obvious first line of defense is to remain unseen, and their gray and brown colors help them to blend in easily. They hunt the waterways for small prey like insects, fish, and crustaceans, and they show remarkable intelligence. They are one of the few species of bird that has been observed using bait to lure prey in. But on occasion, they are the favorite prey of larger animals, such as eagles, caiman, and snakes. When the sun bittern finds itself in a difficult position, it has a simple and effective defensive strategy to appear like a much larger and more intimidating animal. They can open their wings and fan out their tails. As they do so, they bend forward and reveal what appears to be huge eyes on their wings. While this form of mimicry is common in many insects, it's not a common defense among birds, making the sun bittern truly unique. Insects have some of the craziest forms of defense out there, and perhaps one of the most famous examples are the bombardier beetles. This is not a single species, rather around 500 known species of ground beetle from around the world. These beetles hunt along the forest floor, but they too are prey. However, unlike other beetles, the bombardier beetles have an explosive form of defense. Within their abdomens, they have two chambers, each storing a strong chemical. In one, they have hydroquinone, and in the other, hydrogen peroxide. When threatened, they can release these two chemicals into a third chamber called the vestibule. When they mix, they cause a violent reaction that produces an extreme amount of heat. In fact, the mixture can reach temperatures as high as 100 degrees Celsius instantly. The mixture then shoots through an outlet valve, which they can aim in almost any direction. As it shoots out, it not only burns the potential predator, it generates a loud sound which further startles it. Some species store enough chemicals to shoot the burning liquid as many as 20 times in a row, and in extreme cases, they can even cause the death of the creature that is trying to eat them. While they resemble gulls, Fulmars are a type of petrel, 
and are represented by two species, the northern and the southern fulmars. These species nest on cliffs in large colonies. Only producing one chick at a time, which sits exposed on the cliff for weeks, the birds need a creative way to keep themselves from being preyed on by other, larger species of bird. The name fulmar comes from a Norse word, which means foul gull, and it's a name that's well earned. The birds store a foul-smelling orange oil in their stomachs that they can use for protection. If a predator like a skua or a sheathbill approaches, the birds can vomit up this oil, using it as a long, sticky projectile. Their vomit can travel as far as two meters. Smelling terrible can deter a predator, but it has another function. If the parents are nearby, the smell also warns the parents that their chick is in danger. If the parents aren't close, the vomit does much more than smell bad. Being extremely oily, it coats the feathers of the predatory bird and has the potential to kill them. Phasmids are some of the most remarkable animals in the world. They have some incredible abilities, like being able to regrow lost limbs and parthenogenesis, which is the ability to lay fertile eggs without a mate. But they're perhaps most famous for their amazing camouflage. For almost all species of phasmid, their first line of defense is to go unnoticed. Some of the most remarkable examples of mimicry are found in this order of insects. They generally try to look like either a stick or a leaf, and can be black, brown, or green. Some leaf insects even have small brown spots and veining on the wings to make their mimicry even more believable. Some stick insects are covered in thorny projections to look like lichen or moss. But camouflage isn't the only way that they protect themselves. When threatened, most males can fly away. But if flight isn't an option, stick insects make the performance even more believable. They tuck in all of their legs and remain rigid, often dropping to the ground like only a dead stick would do. And when passive defense doesn't work, many species can go on the offensive. Stick and leaf insects cannot bite, but that doesn't mean that no species could hurt you. There are some species, like the two-striped walking stick of the United States, that are capable of producing a spray aimed at the eyes that can cause burning and eye damage to smaller predators that might try to feed on it. Other species, like the jungle nymph or Eurycantha calcarata, have spurs on the hind legs that can be used to produce a painful pinch. Some species smell bad. Others display bright wing colors to frighten predators. Still others are covered in spines that make them difficult to consume. So while these insects seem helpless, they are often far from it. It isn't just animals that use unique defensive strategies to protect themselves. Plants also have some interesting methods to make sure that they aren't as easily consumed. One of the most interesting forms of defense is found in the sensitive plants of the Americas. Mimosa pudica is commonly encountered in low nutrient soil that receives a lot of sun. This means that they're frequently found along the edges of paths and roads. Their leaflets are arranged in pairs along a single pinna. They have fluffy pink flowers, and their stems are covered in small spines. While the spines serve to deter some herbivores, the species has another remarkable line of defense that makes them particularly interesting. They can move. Many plants are known to move, but they generally do so very slowly, so their movements aren't noticeable unless we speed them up. But the sensitive plant is able to perform a type of rapid movement to protect its leaves. When disturbed, the leaves fold in on themselves in a mesmerizing wave. 
This disincentivizes predators from consuming the leaves. The plants also fold their leaves in at night in order to reduce water loss to evaporation. While this is an interesting feature of the plant, it costs a lot of energy to perform and interrupts with their photosynthesis. Mimosa pudica is now a popular houseplant because of this interesting behavior, and it has been introduced to many other parts of the world, including much of Asia and Africa, where it has become a pest species. Another plant that has a really unique form of defense are the Cecropia trees of tropical America. If you've ever been in the tropical forests of Latin America, they're easy to spot. They often project from among other trees, with no other plant touching them. No tree, vine, fern, or moss is able to grow on them because of an amazing relationship the trees have with a genus of ants. There are 61 recorded species of Cecropia tree, and many of them are associated with a specific species of Azteca ant. Their associations are often so strong that the trees cannot survive without the ants, and the ants cannot survive without the trees, having evolved multiple traits in response to one another. The internodes of Cecropia trees are hollow, and quickly after sprouting, an Azteca ant colony moves in. As the tree grows, the ant colony grows with it. The ants drill entrances into the internodes to build their nests, but they get much more than just protection from the trees. Cecropia trees also feed the Azteca ants, producing small food bodies to keep their live-in bodyguards happy. Meanwhile, the ants don't let anything touch their host. Every plant, insect, or other would-be problem for the tree is quickly removed. Recent studies have even shown that the ants are able to repair damage to the tree using plant sap and plant fibers. If the tree dies, so does the ant colony. If the ant colony dies, the tree is quickly consumed by herbivores. So the two groups of species continue to live in mutually beneficial existence, defending each other in order to defend themselves. Slow lorises are species of primates found in South and Southeast Asia. As their name implies, they really do move slowly. So slowly, in fact, that their primary defense when threatened is to stop and remain as still as possible in hopes of going unnoticed. They're only known to have three predators, snakes, crested hawk eagles, and orangutans though it's suspected that they're also preyed upon by other carnivores within their range, such as wildcats and bears. If remaining still doesn't work for them, they have another defense that's quite rare among mammals. Slow lorises have a toxic bite, but they don't produce toxin in their mouths. They actually have a brachial gland under each arm that produces a toxin similar in molecular structure to cat dander. When threatened, the slow loris will lick a secretion from this gland. When the secretion mixes with their saliva, it becomes toxic. While it is rarely fatal, it makes their bite much more painful, often causing swelling and potentially an allergic reaction. There is actually one recorded human death from a slow loris bite, and it's believed that the person actually passed because they went into an anaphylactic shock. Slow lorises also use this toxin to protect their young. If they need to leave them unattended for a time, they will produce some of this toxic saliva before grooming their young by licking them, coating their fur in toxin. Studies have shown that many mammalian predators within their range are deterred from the smell of this toxin alone. You may be familiar with the expression, as a fish to water. For the flying fish, however, this might be better phrased, as a fish to air. 
There are over 60 recorded species of flying fish known from all five of the oceans. The greatest concentration of species is found in tropical waters, with the waters around Barbados being particularly associated with these animals, being known as the land of the flying fish. The fish don't actually fly, rather glide through the air using specially adapted pectoral fins. When under threat from other, larger species of fish, they speed towards the surface, jump into the air, spread their fins open, and glide as far as they can before re-entering the water. They can jump as high as 6 meters, reach speeds of as much as 70 kilometers per hour, and travel as far as 400 meters in a single glide. While this is an excellent defense against fish, it also makes them more susceptible to being preyed on by fish-eating birds like gulls and frigate birds. Despite this, it's generally a helpful way to escape predation, and they've been doing it for millions of years. The earliest fossils of fish with this adaptation date as far back as the Middle Triassic period, about 240 million years ago. Flying fish aren't the only animals that use their ability to glide to defend themselves. There are many other gliding species around the world that you might not suspect. One of the better known examples are the flying squirrels. Over 50 species can be found throughout North America and Eurasia, each having a membrane from the wrist to the ankle known as the pantagium. When threatened, they can jump from a tree and glide to another. Amazingly, they're also capable of steering themselves using their limbs and tails. There are also many species of frog that have the ability to glide to protect themselves. Over 380 species of flying frog have been identified, all of which are arboreal in lifestyle. They all differ morphologically from non-flying species, having greater webbing between the fingers and toes, skin flaps on the arms and legs, and a lighter, more aerodynamic body shape. The Draco genus of lizards has an even more impressive gliding ability. These arboreal flying lizards live throughout South and Southeast Asia, where they feed on insects among the trees. Males have brightly colored dewlaps for mating displays, but this isn't the only part of their bodies that can be manipulated. They also have a series of much longer than normal ribs that they can extend outwards. These ribs are often covered in brightly colored scales, and as they glide from tree to tree, they appear almost like a butterfly or a small bird. They're so beautiful, in fact, that they're commonly framed for home decor. Perhaps the strangest gliding animals are the flying snakes. There are five species in the Chrysopelea genus, each capable of gliding as a means to escape potential predation. Despite having no limbs or extra skin flaps, flying snakes can glide better than flying squirrels or frogs. They move to the end of a branch, decide where they want to go, and when they have their destination decided, they launch themselves from the branch, extending their ribs and sucking in their bellies. The width of the body doubles, creating a similar concave shape to that of a frisbee. They can glide as much as 100 meters before coming to rest in a safe spot far away from their would-be predator. And that's it for today's video. Do you know of any other crazy ways that species defend themselves? Let me know in the comments below. I need to say a special thanks to my patrons. Without their ongoing support, I wouldn't be able to make a video like this every week. If you want to support the channel, consider joining us on Patreon. The link is in the video description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.